Hello, third graders. Mrs. Hales here with your next art lesson. Today, we're going to read a book called Little Owl's Night. And then I'm going to introduce you to an artist named John James Audubon, who was an American artist who traveled all across the United States, recording and documenting all the birds that he could find. It looks like the illustrations in this story, Little Owl's Night, were made either on the computer or using cut paper. We are gonna be drawing our owls. Little Owl's Night. Little Owl was having a wonderful night. He watched the funny possum family waddle along in a neat row. Hedgehog sniffed around the mushroom patch. Skunk was eating berries because he could find no snails. By the river, beavers gnawed at trees. Turtle hid in her shell as fireflies danced all around. Little Owl visited his friend the raccoon. As they sat in the clover, fog rolled in and hovered just overhead. Moths fluttered toward the moon. Silver dust fell from their wings. Little Owl wanted to follow, but it was time to head home. On the way, Little Owl flew by Grumbly Cave. Bear was inside, snoring up a storm. Wake up, bear! Don't sleep all night, Little Owl sang. I want to show you the moon. But the bear kept snoring as usual. Little Owl flew home to his tree, gazing at the sky. He wondered if the bear had ever seen the stars. Little Owl sat on his branch, how he loved the night forest. Frog croaked softly, cricket chirped smartly. Little Owl heard rustling at the foot of his tree. Fox had come to say hello. It was late now, the bats were gliding home. Mama, Little Owl whispered, tell me again how night ends. Mama said, the moon and stars fade to ghosts, spider webs turn to silver threads, dewdrops sparkle on leaves and grass like tiny stars come down. Moon flowers close, morning glories open, the sky brightens from black to blue. The rooster crows, the crows caw, and the day begins, said Mama. But little owl did not hear. He was fast asleep. The end. John James Audubon was born in Haiti, but grew up in France. When he was about 18, he moved to the United States. And then he started drawing and painting all the birds that he saw here. He's credited for discovering 25 new species of birds in the United States that nobody knew existed before he started drawing and painting them. His illustrations are fairly realistic, I think. They don't look like a photograph but you can definitely tell the different species from one another. He showed great attention to detail. John James Audubon was what we call today a scientific illustrator. This combines science and art, and it's a career that you can do in, in the arts. And the illustrators work with so much detail and accuracy that you can tell things like what exactly what the beak shape is or the shape of the eyes. So the illustrations are super specific and sometimes they're even labeled. Scientific illustration isn't always just about birds. It's, it can be their drawings and paintings of anything related to science. So it could be something from the natural world like plants or animals, or it could be something related to the medical industry. Um, John James Audubon also drew and painted other things, but he's most well known for um, drawing and painting birds and wildlife. Now it's our turn to get started drawing our owls. You can draw an owl with any material or medium that you have around. This is using construction paper crayons on black paper. Here is an owl I made using markers and white copy paper. These two owls both have patterns. They both have um, exaggerated eye size and shape, and they have exaggerated body, um, body parts or body shapes. So your owls can be, um, they're gonna look a little bit cartoonish, and they have to have at least two patterns somewhere on the owls. Let, let's get started. 
If you want to have your owl resting on a branch, you can draw that first. Then you're going to draw a large oval with a circle on top. You want to connect the head to the body so your owl doesn't look like a bobblehead. If you'd like to make your owl look like the owl in Little Owl's Night, you're going to make your head even larger. I wanted to draw three claws on each foot that are long, skinny, pointy triangles wrapping around my branch. I wanted to make oversized eyes with oversized irises and oversized pupils. Lots of owls have exaggerated large eyebrows and you need to have some ears on your owl. If you want him to have a pattern on his belly, you can draw a separate space to do a pattern. I did a pattern that looked like feathers that are slightly overlapping and offset. I also put a pattern of just straight lines around his eyes. You can always add more patterns later by putting a darker color pattern over a lighter color solid area. Now let's add, add some color. For this example, I'm using markers. I outlined my owl in a magenta color, um, the areas that I wanted to color in that color. I wanted my owl to be fall color, so I was thinking of warm colors like brown and tan and orange and red and yellow, those, that was what I wanted my color scheme to be. Uh, I colored my owl body solid orange and then I went over top of that with zigzag pattern. So I've already got three patterns on my owl. Remember, you only have to have two different patterns in two different areas. Can you have more patterns than that? Absolutely, you can always add more. It's your turn now, boys and girls, to draw your owls. I'm going to leave you with a couple images of different cartoon style owls to inspire you. See you next class.